Hello, I am a standard critic. Let's talk about the king of B-movies himself, Roger Corman. He recently passed away, but his legacy will live on. Having produced and directed tons of movies on a low budget in such a short amount of time, you may know him for works like The Intruder and Machine Gun Kelly, or his Edgar Allan Poe adaptations like The Pit and the Pendulum, House of Usher, and The Mask of the Red Death. With that said, for every good movie he made, there were 5 or 6 bad ones, which lived up to the reputation of crude B-movie schlock with no talent or cinematic value. Of all the films that I've considered reviewing, I'm going to watch the 1961 film Creature from the Haunted Sea. Judging from the poster where most of the budget was probably spent on, tells us that it's a horror monster movie very typical of the time. Let's watch our first Roger Corman film with Creature from the Haunted Sea. We see two men secretly exchanging information. One of them gets killed and the other one gets the hell out of there. Don't wait for a few more minutes up there just to be sure that they're gone. <sighs> this is what I have to go through just to find the bar in this town. This character is a secret agent played by Robert Town, but credited in the movie as Edward Wayne. Believe it or not, this guy went on to become a screenwriter for a lot of famous movies, including Chinatown, for which he won an Oscar. But I don't think his writing talents necessarily translate into good acting. Just listen to his narration. I looked around the room. Long training and my own instinct told me that the girl sitting at the table seemed the most likely prospect. She was beautiful. I could have killed myself for wearing this stupid disguise. Now she would never know me as I really am. Hey everybody, I just want a free trip to Greece. I had to be sure it was you. XK120? Right. XK150? Get it? Unless you're a car expert, you probably won't get the reference to their code names. You have the code. In point of fact. Yes. In point of fact. Yes. In point of fact, I've got my Dakota ring. You've said in point of fact three times. What the hell? Hancock, perfect. Print it. Let's move on. Don't you want to do another take yet? No, it's fine. It's real. Despite its low budget, the movie was able to afford an animated credit sequence. Just don't expect the Pink Panther to show up here. The most improbable event of the 20th century occurred in Havana, Cuba. The survivors of the old regime escaped as best they could, taking with them only a few meager effects and other art objects. We cut to communist Cuba, where a group of military exiles hire a smuggler to get them off the island with a stash of stolen treasure. Of course you know that our government has been overthrown. You know, I heard that. Shut up. It has been necessary for us to, uh... Steal the Cuban treasure. Hurrah! Shut up! The most confusing thing about this meeting is, why did they even bring Ron Howard along for the ride? General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, mis buenos amigos americanos, nos cabe el honor de preservar el honor del honor cubano. En un solemne acto de confianza han confiado en nuestras confiables manos ese botín. Okay, that's a lot of Spanish to fit in one sentence. Therefore, I'm going to entrust you a solemn trust. Here we have one-fourth of the Cuban treasure. You're going to lose your casino, so you'll be leaving Cuba anyway. You have a big yacht, and you can leave any time you wish, such as immediately. If you wish to resolve the mystery, you must begin by resolving the mystery, because to become a good detective, you have to be a good detective, and you can start the work any time you want, but it must be right now. But they get chased by the Cubans in the only car the army could afford. Ah! 
that was quickly resolved. Anyway, the secret agent goes undercover, posing as a sailor working for the smuggler. And so we left Cuba forever, sailing into the most astounding adventure to be inflicted upon man. And what a group we were. Because this film is only 75 minutes long, it would be quicker to introduce each character with more narration. The big cheese was Renzo Capetto, alias Capo Rosetto, alias Rado Pizzetti. Also known as the best Humphrey Bogart look-alike, this is clearly a tribute to his character from To Have and Have Not, even down to the same premise of him smuggling people in the Caribbean. Mary Bell Monaghan. Alias Mary Monaghan Bell, alias Bell Mary Monaghan, alias Monaghan Mary Bell. They say she was a gun mall just because Lucky Luciano gave her a Rolls Royce every Christmas. And they can't really prove that she sneaked into the Hollywood Bowl with a Tommy gun and rubbed out the convention of police chiefs in 1956. Okay, that is way, way too much information for anyone to take. This is Happy Jack Monaghan. So called because he developed a muscle spasm in his cheeks from watching too many Humphrey Bogart pictures. After watching this, I have no idea why Harrison Ford's narration in Blade Runner was so hated. This is the truly phoned in narration that we needed. Sleeping under the bleachers at Forest Hills and mooching nickels in the BMT subway. Since taking up with Renzo, he has become a well known dice loader and murderer. The most Stop explaining its character, it's too much. Imagine someone telling my story in that manner. This is Lucas Alexander Julian Chaplin. No relation with Charlie Chaplin despite the surname, the same country of origin, the same month of the year, and almost the same date of birth. This guy has a history of anxiety, including a fear of babies, volcanoes, and pigs. He's a YouTuber who refuses to become a sellout idiot. He has a deep hatred for modern music and the Teletubbies, and he also doesn't like blah blah blah, although he does like blah 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 blah, and he's also madly in love with blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. The agent tries to convince the smuggler's girlfriend into abandoning this life of crime. You're too good for this life. You're a victim of circumstance. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Now, what is your story? Don't worry, Mary Bell. I'll save you. I die. One of my subordinates tells me to come clean and leave behind this life of crime. He wouldn't be by any chance an undercover agent. Hello Havana, this is Agent XK-150. Over. So far, not too much has happened, but I'm anticipating- Wow, how are you able to talk so clearly with that cigarette in your mouth and your lips barely moving? We've had a good life together, haven't we, baby? Mm, you know it, boobs. Humphrey Bogart and his team devise a plan to get rid of the Cubans on the boat and keep the treasure for themselves. He used to be a Cuban fisherman by the name of Hemingway. He got hooked on a sea monster. In these waters a couple of years ago, we're gonna show these boys the greatest sea monster they ever saw in their lives. And that's exactly what they do. They kill one of the soldiers and plant fake footprints. The only problem is that no one expected the following plot twist. But what none of us knew was that the monster invented by Renzo had already been invented by somebody else. By a couple of other monsters, I guess. <laughs> Don't you just love those movies where a character makes up a stupid story, which then turns out to be true? Well, I don't think it was anything human that killed your soldier. Those soldiers were attacked by some weird creature from the sea. It came in, did your boys in, and vanished again. <laughs> that creature, how silly! Did you really think it is? That's the most logical response. Silencio! Este estúpido gringo tiene razón. Yo creo que esto solo ha sido hecho por un anfibio desconocido de aguas desconocidas. Really? The general believes this stupid monster? What was he a general of, douche town? What do you make of it, Sparks? They spot a Cuban boat led by the League of Extraordinary Beards, and that means trouble. Now, let's appear casual. Maybelle, sing a song. And up, 
and down and up and down and up and down. Oh, kiss me in 52. I met you somewhere in 52. This scene goes on for three minutes, by the way. Oh, hi there! You're looking for some gold that was stolen from the people of Cuba! Oh. Mm, baby. Madam, stop singing. This is a serious situation. And the creature from the haunted sea. Will you stop ignoring us? Baby. Come here. I've had enough of this. Shoot her. <laughs> Most unconvincing deaths ever. And that's the main problem. A lot of the scenes feel rushed and poorly prepared. It's as if they had to film everything in a hurry. <laughs> Did they make the entire movie in just five days or what? Holy shit, I was just kidding! Did they really shoot the entire thing in such a short amount of time? Well, that explains why most of the movie feels like it was filmed on the first take. You have this terrific voice. Oh, if I could only push you overboard. Your talents are being allowed to molder away unknown to humanity. Again, she does not find it suspicious that one of her men is telling her to run away with him, nor does she alert her boyfriend about this. She was madly in love with me, only she didn't know it yet. She loves you, just kidding, she hates you! <laughs> On the north coast of the Big Island is a teeny speck of land called La Isla del Borracho. It should be deserted by now. They pick a deserted island on which to hide the treasure by intentionally having the boat hit some rocks. You know, this reminds me of one time on Lake Minnetonka. Louise Schmidt and I were paddling along when what do you think happened? Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? The agent explores the island where he comes across a telephone. Right, thanks a lot. The service is terrific. But not only that, he also comes across other people, including a well-dressed gentleman who resembles Toto walking on puddles of water. Wait, I just realized something. This isn't a horror film. All this time, it was a comedy! <laughs> <laughs> All along I thought that it was an incompetent movie, but that was the joke, it was intentionally incompetent. <laughs> I have been fooled by the ultimate prank. So let's continue with this comedy. Some of the crewmen find women who conveniently live on this island, who conveniently turn out to be the perfect mates. <laughs> this must be the island from Lost. No, not Lost. Gilligan's Island. Damn it. Uh, this girl is my daughter. Her name is Mango. Mango? Siento mucho lo que le ha pasado, señor. Es algo que le pasa a todo el mundo con mucha frecuencia. Es lo mejor. That is not the correct translation in those subtitles. This is what she actually said. Siento mucho lo que le ha pasado, señor. Es algo que le pasa a todo el mundo con mucha frecuencia. Es lo mejor. Ron Howard gets a new boat from a nearby island with the help of another woman who instantly has a crush on the undercover agent. Hermanita Rodriguez? Sparks Moran. As a trained espionage agent, I could tell that she was attracted to me. 
Why are most of the women instantly attracted to the first men they come across? What happened with conversations or getting to know each other? I mean, granted, I wish women acted like that with me, but this is really pushing it. Look at her, she keeps touching him and won't leave him alone. She's almost as pretty as her mother. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, but can't she do imitations? Well, I don't know, and I don't care, because I love her. Gosh, you gonna marry her? Yeah, well, why not? Now that I remember, wasn't there a monster in this movie? If so, where the hell is it? I have the honor to report that my men will be ready in one hour. Ready for what? To dive to the strandbox. Boy, this show is a lot of fish blocking the action. I can see where George Lucas got the inspiration for his special edition effects. All those Cubans alone in the deep. This was a chance for Renzo to again become the sea monster. They take advantage of the situation by killing more Cuban soldiers and make it look as if they were killed by the monster that is actually real. No, it was a monster. What do you mean a monster? A real, live, honest-to-goodness monster with claws and everything. Oh, you're nuts. Because it went so well the first time, the Cubans go back in the water to find the chest, and wouldn't you know, the Cookie Monster is there and starts killing several people. Down you go, bitch! Mango! Mango! He also kills Ron Howard. After watching the dilemma, I can't say I blame him for his murderous intent. You can go anywhere you like. I'm going home. To America? America? We'll always have Paris. I'd just like one more chance to explain. Please. It's alright, Brooksy. It doesn't really matter. He attacks his prey by speeding up the footage. I love you till the day I die. So long, toots! Bingo, bingo. I just want to be hugged! Of all the monsters out there in the world, I just had to come across the dumbest one of all. Most of the characters are killed, leaving only the agent and his girlfriend of two days. You're beautiful. So I got the girl. And guess who got the gold? You're a monster that lives under the sea. What could you possibly want with that money? I will spend all this money on cookies and then eat them. That was Creature from the Haunted Sea. And I must say, it's a pretty good satire of bad B-movies by being a bad B-movie. I mean it, it's such an unbelievably funny film for all the wrong reasons they were intentionally going for. From the acting, the non-existing directing, the cheap production values, the nonsensical story, and the sheer randomness of it all. I loved every minute of it, and if you're new to Roger Corman's filmography, this is definitely a must watch. I promise, you'll be laughing non-stop. I am a standard critic and thanks for watching.